here. Try to zoom in on it a little bit. It's a Bifler uh, 60 turn 22, LM, uh, 22 gauge uh, enamel copper uh, wire with 100 turns on top of that winding of 17 gauge enamel wire. This also allows us to uh, get more current, but I want to show up at the most efficient setting. We're drawing 1.1 amp from the power supply or battery. We are creating 4 amps of current in the cell. The, the voltage across the cell is 2.31. Return current is 2.18. Bring it back into. We start getting into the sweet point. Okay, here is 200% unity. Again, we're at resonance now. Uh, a little bit higher uh, current, how I got the current to come up was I adjust the amplitude of the signal in and we're at two point, we're at, well, we're, we're way over 200% in unity here. Okay, on my uh, Fry's, not Fry's, but, but the Harbor Freight uh, frequency counter, it shows it's 6.83 kilohertz. Okay, now you can see that the, the trace is, is square, so we, we're, uh, we're on one, off two. On one, off two. So I should be able to at least have one one shot to trigger the coil when there's nothing turned on. Finished winding a trifiler on an eight inch ferrite rod, approximately 42 turns per wire. And one thing you might notice is that as you add more wires well simultaneously uh, the winding becomes more of a bias winding I don't know if that has any effect whatsoever but we'll find out without changing anything on the oscillator circuit we're now I would say would be four and a half four four and fifty mils drawn from the power supply 3.7 amps in the in the cell circuit, 216 across the the uh, voltage across the cell, and damn fast diode return is 316. Okay, this is I forgot to say we don't have anything hooked to the uh, to the uh, the third winding. It's floating right now, and again this is even a little bit better I think than the first figures. I'm now going to add the damn fast second damn fast diode. Okay, now I've added the damn fast diode uh, with the windings reversed on the third, and unexpectedly I got a jump in cell current. Very little. It's very interesting. Very little showing through the damn fast diode, but the diode is getting hot. So maybe just a draw here. Oh come on, come on, come on. Okay, uh, very. That's that's the current through the damn fast diode, which is very little. I don't quite understand that. Uh, I reversed the coils, uh, polarity, and we're drawing 1.9 amps, but the cell is, is producing 5.2 amps. And uh, the diode does get hot though. At 5.2 amp cell draw, I'm drawing two amps from the uh, power supply. Uh, not disappointed. And I'm just trying to figure this all out. Uh, this is a 42 turn trifler thing. Now I'm going to go ahead and, and, and disconnect the diode. With the uh, second damn fast diode uh, disconnected, we're back to that fabulous uh, ratio there, which is uh, almost, I would almost have to say it's, it's, a, it's an 8 to 1 advantage. Here's our duty cycle. Okay. And what is happening here? Uh, if you go back on, I don't forget which video it is, I was talking about I was having power supply failures. I just bought a new PC power supply. 
a uh, very heavy duty one and one morning when I hooked it up and set up it was dead completely then I hooked up my Sears 200 amp battery charger thing and it ran but suddenly I saw smoke coming out of the rear of it yet it only showed about a three amp draw and so I thought well maybe a rodent had crawled up in there but now I'm thinking there is something about this rod circuit that we don't understand I built up well first of all let me go back to the squirrel cage blower that I was using you'll see that on many of my videos now to be honest with you it did have a little damage I had hooked it up to a 14.5 volt and it started to overheat but I'd used this thing for quite a while sometimes I have to hand start it and that was blowing the, the cool air on the rod uh, it finally uh, smoked and then so what I did I built up a just took one out of an old PC power supply it was fine put clip leads on so I could put it in the circuit and I put that over the heat sink because we have the rod cooling is no longer a problem uh, but I wanted, to, I wanted to keep the heat sink uh, um, cool with the MOSFET on it. Uh, when I turned everything on it was fine and everything was fine until I dialed up well I don't have the frequency things not on right now until I advanced the frequency and this this was across the 12 volt to ground outside the, the circuit and it stopped running as soon as I took the signal off the box it started running again I hooked it up again and it stopped running and it never ran again so I made another one actually the, the, the sequence is reversed this was actually the first one I did same thing on that but this one was sitting on top of the power supply when I was advancing the frequency control and I heard a loud snap and this jumped up a little bit and I thought well it had an explosion inside the cell uh, but now I think there's something going on again this is across the 12 volt to ground and of course that's what the rod circuit is so in other words we have a problem if this uh, this circuit is uh, creating some unknown known energy and it would then get back and damage the car's computer or alternator system so I'm going to tear these things down to see what failed and I'm going to try to scope and see what we see on, on the bus, on the 12 volt bus. Uh, very uh, confusing right now to say the least. So that's where we're at right now. Gotta, gotta solve this problem. The duty cycle as you can see is uh, on for one and a half cycles and is, let me move that over, get the position on it. It's, it's on one and three quarters and off one, two, three, four. So that's the ratio. And I left that when, when we had the failure of that, that uh, purple fan. So we'll continue on when I try to find out what failed in these muffin fans. Okay, I wanted to show you what happened. Uh, we had several arc overs. Uh, the, on this one the uh, camera battery went dead I put it down I don't think I had it running more than 30 seconds when this arc over where you see it uh, underneath the printing there uh, it took out the MOSFET and of course the, the damn fast diode and then I had a second time that happened uh, which was um, very interesting uh, it arced from the positive terminal to the just the middle of the uh, the cell and so I'm wondering if there's some stuff we don't really know what's going on uh, stay tuned for part two